Tannins in wine are multifaceted creatures. They can be soft, ripe, well-integrated, aggressive, harsh or grainy. They can make red wine undrinkable or very delicious. Small wonder then that tannins are the most confusing and misunderstood characteristic of wine and the most widely misused word in the wine lexicon. I'd like a red wine, very dry, very tannic, lots of tannin. I mean, the more tannin, the better. You can never have enough tannin, am I right? So what are tannins? What do they contribute to the wine? And how do they differ in cheap versus quality wines? What are tannins? Water-soluble polyphenols that have a tendency to interact with aqueous solutions of proteins and... I'm just joking, guys. Tannins are a type of chemical compound found in plant food and beverages, for example, coffee, tea, chocolate, and of course, wine. They are known for their bitter flavours and ability to bind with proteins, including those in human saliva. This is how they create that characteristic astringent drying sensation in your mouth as if you stuffed your cheeks with cotton balls. Still don't know what I'm talking about? Try to put a wet tea bag on your tongue to experience tannins in the purest form. Tannins in wine. Tannins in wine are mostly extracted from the skins, seeds and stems of the grapes during fermentation. Because white and rosé wines are typically fermented off these skins, their tannin levels will be a lot lower than in red wines. Tannins can also come from barrels the white ages in, as the wine extracts tannin from the oak the barrels are made of. Tannins in red wine. The presence of tannins in red wine is crucial as it gives the wine its complexity, structure, balance and potential for long-term ageing. In other words, tannins simply elevates the drinking experience, but not all tannins are born equal. Depending on the quality and quantity, tannins can be very different in structure and can cause different sensations in the mouth as you taste the wine. For example, in a basic quality wine, unripe tannins, also known as green tannins, tend to be more aggressively astringent. In the mouth, they will feel assertive, harsh and grainy. Excessively harsh, scratchy tannins could leave a bitter taste and make a wine unpleasant, especially if they're not balanced by fruit. This wine is awful. Give me another glass. Well, I think maybe we've had enough wine, sweetheart. I, I can't feel my tongue. But I know it's there because I'm talking. On the other hand, in higher quality wines, ripe tannins show little astringency, have no trace of bitterness, and they contribute to the textual richness of the wine. In the mouth, they will feel velvety, soft, silky, fine-grained, and they will be matched by fruit and freshness. Examples of high and low tannin wines. Some grape varieties are naturally higher in tannins than others. Generally speaking, grape varieties with thicker skins will typically produce wines with higher tannins. Some examples are Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, Shiraz, Nebbiolo and Sangiovese. Grape varieties with thinner skins will typically produce wines with lower tannins. For example, Pinot Noir, Gamay, Zinfandel or Grenache. Thank you for watching guys. If you liked the episode and you found it useful, please hit the like button and make sure that you subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye. Tannins are a type of chemical compound found in plant food, plant foods, plant foods. Excessively harsh, scratch it. On the other hand, in higher quality wines, ripe tannins have no show little astringency.